I know, I know. Dressing up, it's not everyone's favorite thing to do. I know a lot of people, they love to wear their athletic wear and they love to wear their street wear and they look great doing it. But there are certain events that call for that perfect suit or that perfect dress shirt and some people, they're just not prepared for that. But usually those events, they're a thousand times more important than any other event. But there are some people who, they don't know what to look for in that dress shirt, or they don't even have time to look for that perfect dress shirt. So in this video, I wanna go over everything that I look for in my perfect dress shirt. Number one, getting dress shirts in dress shirt sizes. And this might sound obvious, but there are a lot of companies out there who, they make dress shirts and they'll make it in small, medium, and large. And while this is cool and all, it appeals to most people, True dress shirts, they don't come in small, medium, and large. They come in number sizes. And it's gonna be a lot better when you get them in number sizes. It's better to have dress shirt sizes because it gives you more options and the increments in between sizes, they're not as drastic as they are with small, medium, or large. You have a more precise fit. And also, when it comes to sleeve sizes, you're gonna have more options because with number sizes, you get your neck size and you also get your sleeve length. And finding out those sizes is not that hard. While it's great going to a professional in order to get measured properly, I heard that there's apps out there that do the measurements for you. And there's also the option of doing it at home with a tape measure. All you have to do is just get the tape measure, wrap it around your neck, that's your neck hole size. And for your sleeve length, all you have to do is put the measuring tape on the back of the center of your neck, and then just ride it down all the way until your wrist, and that's your sleeve length. When it comes to fit, I look at four things specifically. And the first thing I look at is the neck hole size. The best way to find that out is when you button up your neck. Just make sure that you can fit one or two fingers in the actual neck hole along with your neck. If you can fit one or two fingers and nothing more, then I say that's the perfect fit. It's loose enough where you can actually move around and not feel stiff like a robot. But also, you're not gonna look super loose and your shirt's not gonna look baggy and you're not gonna look like a puffy balloon. When it comes to shoulders, I like to make sure that my shoulder stitching ends where my shoulder bone is. And it might sound obvious, but there are some times where I see shirts or people wearing shirts and their shoulder will end like right here or it'll be right here and either looks loose or they look uncomfortable. It looks like if they go like this, they're just gonna break out of their shirt. And the third thing I like to look at is the sleeve length. And the way I measure it is when your arm is down, your sleeve should end where your wrist starts. And when your sleeve is up, it should show enough just to show your watch and nothing more. And the last thing I like to look at is the torso length. And this is down to preference, but I prefer a longer torso because it's easier to stay tucked in and it's easier to tuck in in general. And it's just gonna make for a neater shirt when it stays tucked in. Number two, collars. And this is really important because that's kind of what makes a dress shirt a dress shirt, the collar. And I've seen so many different companies, like Zara, for example, will make a collar that's just way too small. Instead of a collar that's a nice, good length, they make one that's maybe like half the length and when you have a tie on, it'll show from under your collar and it just looks sloppy. But on the other side, there are other companies who make collars that are way too big and they just look disproportionate with the rest of the shirt. It kind of makes it look like you have a smaller head. It also kind of goes onto the torso and it just looks sloppy. When it comes to a collar, I say the ideal place for your collar to end is where your collarbone is. The edge of your collar should lay where your collarbone is. And when it comes to collar shapes, I only get three of them. I get the club collar, which is this one. It's a nice spread collar, which means that instead of it pointing downward, it points outward. And it's also rounded. It's more of an uncommon look. The other type of collar I get is the spread collar. And you can see it here. The great thing about the spread collar is it has the pointed look to it, so it's not rounded like the club collar. But at the same time, instead of it pointing downwards, it's also pointing outward. So more of your tie is showing and it's not laying on your torso, it's laying on your collarbone and it looks way more streamlined. And the last type of collar I get, and I don't get it often, but it's the button down collar. And you can tell because it'll have a button there. But when it comes to dress shirts and formal wear, I try to make sure that I have as little details as possible because I want that streamlined look. 
So I pretty much only get those shirts to wear under sweaters to make sure that my collar is not overlaying onto the sweater and I wanna make sure that my collar stays in place. Number three, weaving patterns and shirt materials. And these are really important because it's gonna determine the comfort and the breathability of your shirt. It also plays a factor in how formal your shirt looks. There are two weaving patterns that I like to get the most. There's Poplin and there's Oxford. I'm wearing Oxford right now and this is Poplin. Poplin is pretty much the go-to weaving pattern because it makes the thinnest shirts and that's ideal for dress shirts and it has that nice crisp look to it. The only downside is it wrinkles easily. But when it comes to Oxford, I love Oxford but you can't get any type of Oxford shirt. Some of them look way more casual than others because some of them are thicker than others and it's not going to look as crisp. There's also Mercerized Oxford which is a great option when you want to have that slight sheen to it where it'll look more formal but it won't look too shiny where it looks like a polyester shirt. The great thing about Oxford shirts is they're more wrinkle resistant, it's easier to care for and they're also more stretchy so you could go like this and you don't have to worry about your shirt and it being a little too uncomfortable. When it comes to shirt materials, I only get three materials. I only get cotton, linen, or wool. Cotton is a great all year round material. It's great because it can be woven in so many different ways that there's a cotton that's good for the summer. There's also one that's good for the winter. There's a cotton that's good for every season. And it's also a natural fiber, so it's super breathable and super comfortable. And my personal favorite, which is linen. This is a linen shirt. It's just like cotton, it's a natural fiber. So it's just as breathable, but it's also a little bit stiffer. So it can be woven in more open weave patterns and makes it even more breathable and it makes it the best summer material. But I say you can get any natural fiber, just don't get synthetics because the synthetics, they're gonna look really shiny, really cheap, and they're way less breathable and they just make for an uncomfortable shirt. But there are other weaving patterns like end on end or twill or herringbone that give your shirt a nice little subtle texture while still looking formal, but I usually prefer Poplin or Oxford because it gives it the most solid color and it pretty much gives it the most streamlined look. But there's nothing wrong with giving your shirt a little bit of texture so your outfit stands out a little bit more. Number four, which is the little details. And when it comes to dress shirts, the less details, the better. Ideally, your dress shirts, they should be easy to layer. They should be extremely streamlined and just have as little things as possible that interfere with the dress shirt and interfere with the flow of your outfit. Unnecessary things like logos, pockets, or extra buttons, you try to avoid those in your dress shirts. And other things like contrasting stitching or extra pockets, they're just gonna complicate your outfit. It's not gonna look as streamlined and that's gonna ruin your whole formal look. But one little detail I like to have on my shirts is contrasting collars. And you can see it here. I think it's a great option because you get to have a little bit more fun in your outfit without compromising how streamlined your outfit looks because the collar is still white. It's still gonna match a majority of your outfit and it's still gonna look nice. It's still gonna look formal, but you get to have a little bit of fun with it. Number five, dress shirt colors. And you can get any color you'd like, but when it comes to me, I like to get desaturated colors, colors that aren't too bright and in your face because when you're layering these dress shirts, you gotta make sure that your attention is on all of you, not just the little area where your dress shirt is showing. But if you're just starting, just go for white shirts or off-white shirts or even light blue shirts. Number six, think about how you're gonna layer these shirts. Just make sure that you get a shirt that is still really thin because you have to make sure that you can layer on top of a sweater or on top of a vest or on top of a blazer and still feel comfortable and you're not sweating all day in it. And when it comes to layering, you have to think about the colors, the patterns, and everything. You have to make sure that the pattern, if you have one, is not too loud where, once again, it's attracting all the attention towards your shirt and not towards all of you. And there's other details you can look out for, like Mother of Pearl buttons, like these. They're way less likely to crack than other types of buttons. And also, look out for a shirt with split yoke. Those shirts, they have greater flexibility and they usually signify higher quality construction. But those are the things that I look out for in my perfect dress shirt. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure to like the video and be sure to subscribe as well. And also, follow me on Instagram because I'm posting a lot of content on there that you won't see on this channel. But I'll see you guys next time.